little bit of uh, Filipino weaponry. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, Tuak Koya, which is the uh, non chaku for you Japanese practitioners. Um, we're going to go a little bit over how the basic movements are, some of the transitions, just to kind of give you a feel for the basics um, and, a, and a fundamental understanding of the weapon before you start to utilize it. Uh, a little bit of my past experience, I taught Japanese style non chaku for, I want to say, four years prior to learning Filipino martial arts. So I found it beneficial to have training in both, um, but I see that each side has its own beneficial factor. Uh, if we're talking more, uh, you know, twirling and, uh, you know, all along those lines, um, from my experience I've seen a little bit more of the Japanese have an emphasis on this. If you want to actually learn how to hurt somebody with this thing uh, in a non-striking way and more for compressions and, and uh, using a lot of uh, flexible weapon uh, submission work and, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, it's definitely uh, in the Filipino realm. Okay, but you both have uh, very good points, and it's always good to learn both because I like to get uh, two angles on the same technique at least, if not three, okay, because that gives you a more well-rounded understanding of your weaponry. Okay, so to start off with, um, these ones have chains, but for the most part, uh, you know, we get the ones that have the uh, 550 cord in them. Uh, we usually will use our own. Um, the benefits to having a chain is, you know, it's, uh, it's metal, obviously, so you can block metal things with it, but the paracord, it ends up being uh, silent, okay? You can get a little bit more compression strength uh, in certain respects because it actually will tailor a little bit more to the torque of the weapon as opposed to the chain will wrap around and some of the energy will actually die in the chain. Um, also, this is a, a, a Filipino interpret or a Japanese interpretation of Filipino uh, chucks here because we see the rattan, but we see it has ball bearings, right? Um, that means that these are for spinning. They are not necessarily for utilization because if I go to clamp somebody, it will roll. So really good uh, uh, Filipino uh, made weapons will have either like the octagon shape so you can get your compressions or they'll be flat so that when you start to uh, bend the bone and stuff you get a nice bite, all right? So for the purpose of uh, just showing uh, some basics today, I'm going to use these, um, but know that there's different types, uh, you know, and they all have their own little applications, all right? So to start off with, um, these are one of those weapons that I like because it's kind of a hybrid of two weapons. This is like sarong meets stick, okay? So it's kind of like one of those... Uh, weapons that sits on the intersection of uh, two other weapons. So when I'm using this, I'm utilizing principles of the stick and principles of the sarong because I have my hard surface I can strike with or use like a puño, right? Where with a sarong I wouldn't be able to, but I also have my compression factors like I would on a sarong, right? One of the, the things that I've always found to be helpful for me, um, this has made my elastico energy uh, very proficient because I use my stick with the same kind of momentum that I do with chucks. And the chucks are a flexible weapon. Uh, I call them chucks just because I what I call them. Um, but basically what happens with them is that they, uh, they're flexible and they're unpredictable. So the hardest kind of weapon to control is a weapon like this, because as soon as you go to hit something immediately, uh, you don't really know, unless you've trained a lot in hitting something, how it's going to bounce back. And sometimes, depending on if the force is stagnant or incoming, it may be variable. So we have to learn how to be flexible with the weapon and take on the characteristic. So the first thing that I like to show people before I show them how to twirl is I show them how to rebound. Okay? The way that I rebound is I take the chuck, I stick close to my body and I use the momentum of my body to bounce. Now I only experience pain when I pull away from my body and it goes bang and it hits me, right? So I marry the chuck to my body and I turn, okay? I go from my torso, if I'm doing it right, I should be able to go all the way up, in reverse grip now, if I flip over, right? I should be able to go all the way up, use my head, right? And it doesn't hurt, it's close. If I pull it away, it would hurt, okay? So I should be able to bounce off all my weapons, right, my rebounding. Why is this important? It's important because when your weapon comes back at you, you don't know where it's going to go, that you understand to sink the weapon into your body to rebound it back out, right? I go to hit something, it's unpredictable, it comes back, oh, I can learn how to bounce it off my body and not take damage, okay? I like to take a wide stance, work the rebounding energy in between my legs, right? Watching my groin. Can't tell you how many times I've hit kneecaps, elbows, and groins in my life. But, you know, if you tend to keep the weapon close and feel it and bend with it, right, that's the point. You should be flexible like with the weapon, all right? Once we understand that, we can start to work some patterns, right? So, traditional Japanese weaponry, we're kind of more back here. Filipino takes a mindset of I can load with a spring like this, and when I let go, pow, right, I have that spring energy, boom, you know, and I can always keep that compression so it can only move forward. But it's good to know both. These kinds of things are good if you have a person that has a weapon. This kind of stuff is good if you're in close. If I've got a guy on me trying to get me in a tie clinch, I don't want to be doing this. I want to be doing this so that I can be clearing him out and using this to use as a compression, right? Because I need to be getting it close to my body. Just like if I was on the floor, I'd be grappling with it like this, right? So these kinds of things initially are taught 
to make it easier for you so when you do a transition, that's easier than it is to do this, right? Because that requires a little bit more coordination. But understand that if you're going to go long or go or long range with somebody, you don't want to be doing this, right? Because my weapon's behind me and my arms are out, and the first thing to get hit in this game is my arms, okay? So I would have it out like this and loaded so I could fire forward, all right? So we have our downward X's, okay, just like this. Nice and flowy, right? I can get my body involved, move my body, get my leg checks involved, right? I like to rebound off my body, off my knees, right? If you're a tie fire, you can practice your tie knees, right? Whatever it is, whatever stance you have, right? I should be able to, you know, go into a horse stance, hold my horse stance, work this, you know, come here, right? Work some more and more. Kung Fu yards from here, whatever it is, just whatever your structure is, get used to bouncing off of it, right? And then we start to work the downward X. I have downward X here, right? And rather than slinging it, I can sling it like a redondo if I want, but I kind of keep it here and try to utilize my body, right? It depends on the strike. Downward X, upward X. Okay, left hand, right hand. Downward, keeping my hand up in case something comes in I don't expect. Like the chuck, because it's unpredictable. Or the person's hand. Upward X, right? Good. Okay. I have side to side, right? And I like to bounce these all, right? Boom, boom. Downward X, upward X, right? Okay. Once we get used to moving the weapon around a little bit, we start to add in our body movement, right? Because it's not good to sit there and just go at the guy. The guy comes with a shot, you should be able to get out of the way. Give a drop, oh, you know, feed your shot, right? All I'm doing right now is I'm feeding a shot, rebounding, rebounding strike, rebounding strike, rebounding strike, rebounding strike, blocking a shot, rebound strike, right? That's the point, okay? Once we've got that, your basic striking pattern is here, right? Switching hands, however you need to, right? Start to add in transitions, okay? Transition, one, I can go behind my shoulder, just like the Bruce Lee transition, right? Okay. The key to these is to know where to put your hand. Okay. So I'll go across my stomach, and then it just kind of falls there, right? Because I know my body. I have behind the back this way. Notice how if I don't have it right, my hand's not in the right position, doesn't catch it. So you have to have that coordination, upper and lower. See how when I turn my body and I'm flexible like the weapon, I take on its characteristic, I tend to be able to work better with it, right? If I sit still, I have a little bit less efficiency, and it tends to hit me more. So when I'm moving with the weapon, I adopt what the weapon does. If it's flexible, I relax oh, and I roll with it, right? Because if I resist it, I'm going to get hit by it. Okay. So I've got behind the shoulder, which done close or done out far looks like this. That is the same exact thing, but see how it's big this way, right? I do this with a stick all the time. One, downward X, one, downward X, one, downward X. One, right? Or I can go downward X, behind the shoulder. Rebound, downward X, behind the shoulder. Downward X, behind the shoulder. Rebound, behind the shoulder, right? I've got behind the back. I can just basically take this and go behind the back, behind the back, check. The more I turn my body with it, right, the more I can have my footwork in. Rebound, strike, behind the back, behind the shoulder, Behind the back, behind the shoulder, rebound, boom, high, and low working now with the rebound. Got the body rebounding going on, right? Good. In between the leg, get my head movement going on, so I'm not stacking target, right? Right? If I'm turning, oh, it just turns my weapon for me, right? Okay, good. So I've got behind the shoulder, behind the back, okay? I've got across the back, see the adjustment on the hand, okay? Here's a big tip. If you want reach and power, reach for the bottom. If you want control of the flexible aspect of the weapon, go towards the center. But most of the time what you're going to find if you're trying to strike somebody, you want all that distance, right? So you tend to go here, okay? I'll scale. So if I'm out here and I want to hit somebody long range, pow! The second that I come in and I need it in close, I'll scale my way up with the weapon. Or I'll go from close, see that? Scale, now look, I'm far. I do the same thing with a stick to get somebody's range messed up. And they think they're safe, they're not, I hit them. So I adjust my stick, right? Same thing here. Okay, so now what I start to do is I start to go, okay, behind the back, this way, behind the shoulder. Okay, I have diagonal, right? I catch it. 
See how I adjust it? The more I turn my back, the more success rate I get, right? Boom, 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 right. Exactly. You see how I'm closing the distance for myself by doing this? I turn. Oh, there it is. I turn. There it is, right? If I didn't turn and I was a stiff board, I'd be fishing for it. But once I turn, I put my hand in the right place usually, right? Boom, 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 boom. Okay? I have behind the neck. This is another one of those that you don't want to do too close. So it gives me the space to come around and I can recoil off. Behind the shoulder, behind the back, rebound, behind the back this way, rebound, behind the neck, right? That's about putting your hand in the right place, right? Okay? I have in between the leg, right? The key is to let the chain go close, like we talked about the rebounding, to the leg. Boink, right? Just like that. If I pull it out, I get a nice hit to the thigh, or worse, so I let it rebound. Let it rebound, right? Don't let it just go, ha! Ah. Let it bounce. Feel it. Relax. Ooh, I'm going down. Oh, there's an excellent opportunity for that. Oh, okay. Behind the back, behind the shoulders, behind the neck, right? Okay. Okay. So those are some basic transitions, some basic downward X's, right? I have what's called wrist rolls for those of you who have a little bit more experience or if you want to try it. And that's where I'm basically taking this and I'm grabbing by the chain. I spin towards the back of my hand and I allow the weapon to do a 360. That was a wrist roll. See how I went from forward grip to uh, reverse grip? Okay. Now if I want to reverse it, I do the opposite. Wrist roll. This is hard because you want to get involved and just let it roll. Okay. Wrist roll to rebound. Wrist roll. Right? Wrist roll to rebound. Wrist roll. Right? Both sides. The key is to get close to the chain. I cannot do this if it's out here. So I'll clap my hand like that and I'll hurt myself. If I want to roll it, I do this. And rebound. Right? Okay. There's different ways. I can do an assisted wrist roll where I push down, which gives me the energy to come through. Push down. Push down. Right? Push down. Or I can allow it to roll and rebound naturally, right? And anywhere there's a transition, there's an opportunity for that. It looks like this. What I'm doing is basically going around the back of the hand, or around the back of the hand. Let it roll, around the back of the hand. So now when I go downward X, downward X, wrist roll, downward X, wrist roll. Because now when I'm here, it's reverse grip, right? Now it's forward grip. So if I look at those different transitions, up, right? I can go wrist roll, up, right? Okay, I can go sideways like this. I can wrist roll in the front, wrist roll in the back, okay? Wrist roll in the front, wrist roll in the back with a catch, okay? If I want to go low, I can wrist roll low, wrist roll low, wrist roll low, wrist roll low, right? Wherever I'm at, I just kind of, it's like a florete of the, of the weapon, right? It's a multiple shot. There's no real application I found outside of it being like a, you know, an overtraining. Because some people have tried to tell me, okay, it's strike and then strike, but you know, if I'm doing this with my weapon and, and I hit something, I'm not going to be able to hold on to it. So it's really kind of like if you can do that, you know, it should be easy for you to go and rebound, right? It's one of those overshooting the mark things, right? So I have my wrist rolls. Anything I can add into it, downward figure eight wrist rolls, downward figure eight wrist rolls, transition wrist rolls, okay? I have my rebounding energies. Oh, bounce it. Oh, oh. Rebound. Oh, dropping. Rebound. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Here, here, all this stuff, right? So in between all this, I can start to add my other stuff that I know. <laughs> right? And then I have my aerials, which is basically throwing a weapon. Why? I don't know, it looks cool, really. I mean, unless somehow uh, someone's got my arm trapped and I got nothing and I gotta go. Oh, I got it, you know? That's, that's really the only application I got for you right now. But in between this, wrist roll, wrist roll, I just kind of throw it, oh, and I catch it, okay? Other aerials, besides just throwing the weapon and catching it, right? I like this one, this one's flashy. So from right here, I go around, I let my chuck skim down a little bit like that, and I go down, and then around the leg, and I catch it, okay? And I'll usually go into an assisted something. So it looks like this, I'm here, oh, around the leg, and I can usually throw it, Looks real pretty, right? But it's one of those things where if I can do that with my weapon, my chances of hitting myself in the face are probably low, right? Okay. So, as you're working these techniques, whoa, you know, we're looking at the different ranges. 
medial, core toe, right? I should be able to stop every once in a while, throw this thing around somebody's neck, give a knee, give an elbow shot, maybe an uppercut and a shot, back them out. You know, roll. Okay, but it's all off of that. Striking, starting with rebounding, into striking, strike, rebound. Strike, rebound, strike, rebound. Right? Transition work. Oh, transition. Transition. Adding the wrist rolls if you want to look really pretty, right? Wrist roll. Wrist roll. Downward figure eight wrist roll. And that my jumps. Okay? And I got my actual aerials where I can let it go. Oh. My aerials. Oh. My assisted wrist rolls, right? My wrist rolls into my rebounds. Okay, the point of that is that if you can do that, it's a higher level of this. So when I hit the guy in the face and it bounces back, it doesn't smack me in the face too. I hit the guy, boom, it bounces back, and then I use my body mechanics to not take damage. Or if I'm already slipping, whoop, it gives me the shock. But the ability to change constantly, right? Okay. So break it down and work with that.